While Apple's HomeKit has made significant strides in recent years, there are still some aspects where it may not match up to the capabilities of higher-end smart home systems. So let's dive into these areas and we'll explore how Apple can enhance HomeKit for an even better smart home experience. One of the shortcomings of HomeKit is its integration with your live TV setup through your cable box, which is pretty limited. Whereas with traditional automation systems like Control 4 or Home Assistant, you can incorporate your cable TV into your whole automation system and really make your setup pretty simple and consolidated down to one remote and one app. And when combined with voice controls, it really becomes super simple and intuitive, letting you jump between channels, call out shows or sports you want to watch, and easily bounce back and forth from controlling your cable box to your Apple TV, your Roku, or other devices that you might have. Not to mention, with these systems, now you're controlling your TV and your cable box from the same app or remote that controls your lighting, your cameras, your blinds, and of course, now your TV can be incorporated into scenes and other automations in your setup. With HomeKit, while you can add your TV into scenes, the functionality is pretty limited compared to what Control 4 type systems can do. There's really no comparison. HomeKit can do two things. It can turn on and off your TV, and it can control your inputs. That's it. You'll still need a separate remote control or app to control your cable box, Roku, PlayStation, or any other video sources that you might have. So this is definitely one area where HomeKit is lacking in comparison to Control 4 or Home Assistant type systems. Now, this may or may not be something that bothers you depending if, say, you're just streaming all your content and not watching much live TV, but it's one thing to keep in mind when you're deciding which automation system is right for you. Another area where HomeKit falls short compared to Pro AV systems like Control 4 or Home Assistant is in music selection and sending audio throughout your house. So when it comes to streaming music in your home and controlling what you're listening to, where it's playing, and incorporating music into scenes and automations, you have far more options for integration with a higher-end AV system than with Apple's HomeKit. For one, you get a much better app and browsing experience, and you also have way more options for high-quality audio through a multi-zone amp. With a system like Control 4, for example, you have one app, the same app that's controlling your lights, TV, and more, where you can directly select the music you want to listen to. That same app, which can also be in the form of a remote or a touch panel, allows you to send the music you selected to any zone in the house, as well as control the volume. With HomeKit, you can't do this directly from Apple's Home app. You'll find you're jumping between apps to select music, find albums to search artists. You get very limited functionality such as play and pause. This becomes a lot more complicated for other members of your household to control, not to mention for guests who may want to put on a specific song or album. Also, the scenes and automations you can create with a more traditional or dedicated Pro AV system can also be far more complex in the way they integrate with your audio. For example, we'll make a party scene with Control 4 that sets the lights to 80%, plays music throughout the main floor of the house and outside, makes the blinds go up, and let's say put the TV to a sports channel so there's something on during the party. The music can be any playlist or song from any music platform we choose. So we're in the Control 4 app, we trigger the scene called Party, the lights turn on, the blinds go up, the TV turns on, and we hear the music start and the TV changes to the sports channel. So now, if you wanted to do this with HomeKit, you could create a similar automation using HomeKit and a Sonos port. So in the Home app, we'll make our scene, tell it to turn the TV on, open the blinds, and turn on the lights. Of course, like we mentioned before, the TV will only turn on, we can't tell it to jump to a specific channel like we did in Control 4, and we'll tell it to play a specific album when the scene is triggered. And now we come to a limitation, which is we must be a subscriber of Apple Music. That's the only music service we can use. So that's all set up and will trigger the scene. So it seems to work similarly. The lights turn on, the blinds go up, and the TV turns on, the music is playing. But there's another limitation, and that's that the music is airplaying from our Apple TV since that is our home hub. So what's the problem with that? Well, say at this party, someone decides they'd like to throw on an episode of Ted Lasso on the Apple TV in the family room. Well, that is going to cancel out the music that's playing in all the other rooms and replace that with the audio from Ted Lasso. Now, this is really an AirPlay limitation, and Apple could easily fix some of this stuff by making AirPlay a little bit more like Chromecast, but that is a topic for another video. If you're a HomeKit user and you have solutions, let us know in the comments how you're getting around this.
So our next topic is security cameras. And there are a few areas where we think HomeKit Secure Video will really need to improve to match the experience of pro security systems. Some issues are not having a continuous recording option, the fact that motion detection often misses motion clips, as well as the 1080p limit on video footage quality. But the real deal breaker for us is the inability to hardwire your cameras, which means the reliance on a Wi-Fi connection to view and record your footage to the cloud. It also means that you'll have to charge your cameras from time to time or they will have to be plugged into a power outlet which isn't always easily accessible with your outdoor cameras. One workaround for the power issue is to use a PoE to USB adapter to provide constant power to your cameras but this still does not solve the problem of reliance on Wi-Fi for connectivity. On the flip side, with the more pro systems out there, the way they integrate cameras into your system can be quite a bit more advanced. For one, you have the option to use hardwired cameras, and they offer continuous recording to an NVR, which means if your internet is down, your cameras are still recording. There is also no limit on the amount of cameras you can use with these systems, and their AI features like person and package detection are a lot stronger than Apple's. You also have the ability to have your cameras display on TVs, on a touch panel, on different apps. There's just a lot more flexibility compared to the home app. And lastly, where we find HomeKit really needs some improvement is in the Home app itself. We just find that Apple's Home app is not nearly as intuitive and functional as the apps of some of the other pro systems out there. Firstly, the layout on Apple's home app is just a little bit of a visual overload. It seems a little bit cluttered with a lot of text and quite frankly, it just doesn't seem very Apple-like in our opinion. Compare the layout to say Control 4's app with big icons that make it really easy to know how to get to different rooms and sources in your smart home. Also, like we mentioned in some of the earlier points, you don't have full access or control of your content selection directly from Apple's home app. So you'll find you're always jumping in and out of the app to make selections versus again, something like the Control 4, Home Assistant or similar systems that give you far more control without leaving the app. For example, in Control 4, if you tap on the icon for your cable box, you immediately have the remote which is controlling your TV. Tap Apple TV and now you see another remote and you're controlling your Apple TV with that remote. Tap into a music app like Tidal and you can search for music and access playlists. Tap this little icon in the top right and you can see just the sources that are playing and right from that screen control the volume and send the source out to a different room in the house. Apple's home app leaves a lot to be desired, and one suggestion we would have for Apple is to make the app a little bit more like the Apple TV app, where you have connectivity to your different content providers, and make the app act as a hub where you can not only see your different zones and connected devices, but also be able to stay within the app for your browsing and content selection to make it more of a complete experience. HomeKit has come a long way since it was first introduced by Apple. It's a platform that we do like and these are just a few areas where we think that it may not be at the level of some of the higher end systems like Control 4 or Home Assistant just yet. Let us know in the comments your experience with HomeKit and if you have any workarounds to some of the issues we mentioned here. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tech tips, reviews and tutorials. Thanks again for watching. This is Radial Tech.